Good morning, Beginnings Church Makati. Amen. Welcome everyone to the 10 a.m. service. We are so glad that you can join us today. So let us all stand up. But before we go to our worship, no, let us greet muna our brethren. Let us look to our left and to our right. Even if we are wearing our masks, they can see that our eyes are smiling. Say so, hello. So we will worship together today. Yes, and before we start, allow me to read a couple of verses from Psalms 89. You know, this uh, verses, uh, this chapter is all about uh, a declarations of uh, reflection of God's character no? and His uh, covenant with His believers that even in the times of crisis, times of uh, sorrow, God, God will help us and God is willing to save us. Amen? Uh, so, let us uh, worship uh, the Lord by reading this. In Psalms 89, verses 1 and 2, I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. With my mouth, I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you have established your faithfulness in heaven in itself. So let's worship and praise Amen. our Lord. All the 
this. I felt like the Lord wants to touch some people. And the Lord wants to answer prayer. In John chapter 15, Jesus said that He is the vine and we are the branches. And what Jesus is saying here is that as you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask what you shall desire and it shall be done for you. Some of us here, we have many prayer requests. Some of us here are in crossroad of, de of decisions in our lives. And I felt that the Lord just wants to bring a touch of His presence, a touch of His wisdom upon our lives. So if this is you, if you have a prayer request upon your heart, if you're in the middle of making some sort of decisions in your lives, can I request you to step out of your seat and to come here in front? And we want to have some altar call workers to pray or to lay our hands upon you and to pray for you. For some of us, the past few weeks has been a difficult week. And I've just felt like the Lord is just wanting to bring a touch of His refreshing presence in your life. And the Lord just wants to bring healing and peace and hope and direction upon your lives. If this is you, can you just quickly step out of your seats and come here in front and we'll just quickly pray for you. And then we're going to pray for one another. Alright? Can we do that? So if you need a special prayer and you have a, a, a place in your heart that you need the Lord's presence of, step out of your seats and to come here in front. Come on, come on, just quickly come here. Come, come on, just quickly come here. Some of us here, the Lord wants to bring a touch of His refreshing presence, a word of hope and a word of truth upon your life. The Lord wants to speak to you and answer prayers. And this is you, step out of your seat and come here in front. Come on, we can just quickly do that. And for the rest of us, can you find someone to pray with? Maybe in twos and threes, workers, look for new faces, fresh faces, and initiate to have conversation prayers with one another. Let's all spend time praying for one another and bring our life upon the Lord because He is our sure, firm foundation upon our lives. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, come on. Come on, hallelujah. If you need a prayer, just come here in front and the altar call workers will pray for you. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. who are done praying, can I request you to stand and let's come together in the Lord and let's worship Jesus. Let's worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lord. 
Father, we come together in the name of Jesus. And we declare, Lord, that Jesus is the firm foundation of our lives, God. Lord, there may be trials and temptations that may come our way. But we declare and we pray, O oh Lord God, that the work of your Holy Spirit upon our lives, O oh Lord, will come so real, will come so true, Lord, that it stabilizes our heart, Lord. Lord, we will not be shaken by all of these distractions. We will not be shaken by all of these problems, Lord, for we have made them in prayers and petitions and requests upon you. And these are yeses and amens in you. And so, God, we pray for each and every family represented in this place. We pray, oh Lord Jesus, for your signs and your wonders. We pray for miracles. We pray, oh Lord Jesus, that may your will be done in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we declare amen and amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right, before sitting down, just konting kawai kawai to your left and to your right. Just say hi to some of the people here. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Oh, it's so good to see we have some people, some new faces, some visiting faces. And so we're just happy to see you. Welcome. This is Beginnings Church. And, you know, this is a place to worship Jesus and this is a place of encounter. And so what we want to happen here is that each and every one of you, we want you to have an encounter with the Lord. And so this coming Saturday, we're actually going to have a free retreat. It's called Encounter God Retreat. We used to do it fairly often pre-pandemic. And this is the second one since the start of the pandemic, no? And the last one, it was just a... It was just a place of many testimonies and many miracle stories. And so we'd like to invite you to join our Encounter God Retreat. It's going to be this Saturday. This is free admission. And you can just invite your friends and your families and bring them here. Amen? And not, syempre, hindi pa tayo natatapos sa encounter, no? We also want our seniors, our unstoppables, to encounter the Lord. And so this coming December 3, that's going to be the first Saturday of the month, uh, the seniors are going to have their own, like, uh, seniors EGR, no? Uh, slash Christmas party. And so we want to invite all of the seniors here. We want to invite your moms, your dads, your aunties and uncles, and all of the lolas and, lo and, and lolas to come here and we'll be part of this uh, unstoppable Christmas. So this is a good day. This coming week is going to be our prayer and fasting. We take advantage of this prayer and fasting, no? Uh, we title it Sela. Sela means pause. Sometimes our lives are so busy, you know, we have so many distractions that sometimes we, get, we tend to forget to have conversations with God. And so this, the next five days, we want to spend some time to make pauses in the middle of the day, throughout the day, and have a dedicated time of prayer and fasting to the Lord. So we'll have 6 a.m. and 12 noon, and then at the end of the week, uh, at the Friday, we're going to come together on Zoom and we're going to pray uh, for each other. So we would like, we'd like to invite you to be part of this prayer and fasting. No? Uh, you can fast full meals or if you haven't tried it before, maybe you can just fast rice or fast coffee or fast sweets or anything like that. Or just fast one meal no? and use that uh, as a way of telling yourself that spiritual food, spiritual nourishment is more important than physical food, no? And use this time uh, to come together and have a spiritual uh, encounter with the Lord. Amen? Now, let's have uh, Pastor Albert, uh, our senior... Ah, okay. My video pa naman kasi pala. Alright, let's watch this video. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm Karina, and I'm here to talk about tithing and financial stewardship. Tithing is one of the Christian disciplines that we must practice as a good financial steward. I first learned about tithing from our habits teacher. Since then, I have been uh, a tither, and I must say that it has not really been easy, especially for someone like me who was a solo parent. And, um, but I just thank the Lord for His faithfulness because truly He is good and He has provided for um, our needs. Last year, 
our family also had a crisis. Uh, my 89-year-old father got sick of sepsis and was in the hospital for about a month. Um, when we look back at it, uh, we wonder, and again, we are so grateful for the blessing of God. After that crisis, our family really came together and we were able to, to be closer to one another, another, helping, encouraging one another through the crisis. And today, uh, we actually have a nightly family uh, Bible study and prayer time. And even our other relatives from other provinces all over the country join us every night as we stand in prayer. I must say that God never fails to deliver his promises, and I am proof of that. So let us tithe and give to the Lord with obedience and love. God bless you. Good morning, beginning church family. Praise God. Wonderful testimony from Sister Karina. Can we also appreciate our worship team today for just leading us, our uh, tech team, everyone who is involved in just making sure when we gather here, uh, we have a, just a wonderful atmosphere of worship. We continue our series on stewardship. Last Sunday, Pastor Dennis Hepner started us off on the teaching about tithing, and I want to continue it. Uh, because I do believe with all of my heart, if we practice God's word in the area of finances, we will find ourselves blessed, prosperous, and abundant. Sino sa inyong gustong prosperous and abundant your life? Amen? Yeah. Yeah. If you do not raise your hand, you will have a delay in uh, your abundance and, and prosperity. Oh, no. Can you ask it again, Pastor Albert? Okay, I'll ask it again. I'll give you a second chance. How many of you, you want to have a abundance in your life? Raise your hand. Yon. Yon. Kasama tayo dun sa first bus. You know, sa first trip. Uh, because I do believe the Word of God provides very good principles. But let me begin by showing you some surveys. This was done in different parts of the world. And... Uh, even though it is not specifically in the Philippines, except for the last couple of slides that I will show, I think we can relate to the questions and the answers. So here's the first. How worried are you about the current state of the economy? The answer, 39% somewhat worried, 37% very worried. If you add that, that 76% of people are worried. Three out of four people on the planet are worried about the state of the economy. And you might say to yourself, I think I'm one of those three. Okay? Because if we'll be honest, right? Inflation, uh, and then ano pa yung isa? shrinkflation, and all kinds of things. Here's the second question. In terms of money, what are your top five worries? Here are the answers. Insufficient savings, unable to afford daily needs, being in debt, not enough discretionary funds, not having a stable income, and some of you are saying, all of the above. <laughs> And if you are all of the above, my gosh, that's why we will be praying today as well, specifically for that. But even if only one, even if only one of those five things, that's already enough to cause you worry. Here's the third. If you had a sudden medical emergency, how will you pay for it? Here are the answers. Use money reserved for something else. You pang tuition sana. You pang travel sana. Personal savings, credit card, because then you can delay payments. Or borrow from family and friends. Very common in the last couple of years that I've noticed, yung GoFundMe. How many of you have ever had a family or friend na, na go GoFundMe because of a financial crisis? Now, look at this chart. This, this was uh, uh, quite uh, interesting for me. Depending on your age group, all right? This is a survey in the U.S., but I think you can relate. Uh, what, what Americans now are, are thinking about on a daily basis Young millennials, age 18 to 24, these are college, uh, early young adult uh, people. Look at the uh, money is red, 26%. Uh, but look at the competing item on the list, love life. Yeah. So, yung mga college and early young adult, parang yun ang iniisip, ano? How do I get more money and who will I marry? 
Okay, so, <laughs> so those are the top two. Then as you move further, older millennials, young Gen Xers, older Gen Xers, money remains to be a major concern. But as you enter the baby boomer 55 upward, uh, nandun po ako, uh -oh. and then yung seniors that we, we will have, uh, seniors EGR, notice uh, the yellow bracket. Ano yung yellow? Health. Yon. Because when you hit around 50-ish, that's when you start noticing certain parts of your human anatomy begin to ache. Okay? And whereas before you were Chanel number five, now you are Katinko. Yon. So, <laughs> so, but that is just the reality of life. Okay? I'm just... Uh, okay. So, um, now look at this. These next two are from the Philippines. This uh, survey. Households that experienced financial difficulty during the pandemic. You know where the Philippines is there? The one that has the longest red mark. 85% of Filipino households experienced financial difficulty during the pandemic. So we're talking about someone in the family lost their job. Uh, someone in the family was hospitalized and it affected them financially. Maybe they are, their business slowed down. A, a variety of factors. Uh, apparently, ours was like the most hit based on this uh, survey of Southeast Asia. Here's the next question. And this question has to do with how long can you go if all of a sudden you lose your job? Okay? The duration over which your resources can cover basic necessities. Look at the Philippines again. The blue one there, 51.5% ang response nila, less than two weeks. Meaning, if I lose my job right now, I only have enough to carry me for the next two weeks. After that, I'm gonna need ayuda from the government. I'm gonna need help from everywhere else. And so my prayer today, wherever you are in this chart, in terms of how far your resources can go, I pray God will stretch it beyond the normal. Amen? That God will do amazing things in us. So next to the topic about the kingdom of God, Jesus spoke about money more than any other topic, which means Jesus knew it's a top concern. Jesus knew. The Lord knows we think about it, and therefore He had a lot to say about it. So financial stewardship is a belief that recognizes God is the owner of everything. Wow. Can you say that with me? God is the owner of everything. Uh, objection, your honor, someone might say. Uh, Pastor Albert, it is my name that is on the title of the house. It is my name that is in the LTO registration of the car. It is my name that's in the bank account. How can you say that God is the owner? Because that's the ultimate reality. And you have to accept that because that's the first step in stewardship is to recognize God is the owner. Because if you cannot get past that biblical truth that says the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, if your mindset is like this, I am the owner of whatever I have. My house is mine. My car is mine. My bank account is mine. Of course, if you're married, my house it belongs to my wife. My car belongs to my wife. My bank account belongs to my wife. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You know, when we were building our house in, in Binyan and uh, the architect was drawing like this and, you know, uh, in the end, I think I got one cabinet out of the entire house. One cabinet is mine. And half of it has other clothes also, not mine. So, sa dami-dami ng cabinet, I got one. How many husbands here, you all understand that truth, right? <laughs> you get one cabinet in the entire house and half of it is not even your clothes. Okay, so you, God is the owner, but you are the manager entrusted by God with His resources to use it according to His good purposes. So today we'll learn those stewardship principle. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we surrender our hearts to you because on our own, we might think that we own everything and therefore, we can use it according to our own preferences. Lord God, today, would you break that thought in our mind because the Word of God tells us we belong to God. Our entire being 
belongs to God. Everything we have belongs to God. And God entrusts these things to us so we can use it for His purpose and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, here we go. James chapter 1. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from our Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. First principle, everything we have comes from God. Your job comes from God. Your career comes from God. Your business comes from God. Your health, your house, your car, everything. But again, again, objection your owner, someone might say. You know, I work for that kaya. You know? I, I go to work. I clock in. I clock out. I run a business. And so whatever I get from there as the fruits of my labor, that's from what I, that's from me. Yes, again, that is true. But as this text tells us, God is the giver of everything. And every day you have to just recognize and thank God for that. Amen? From the moment you wake up, Lord, thank you, I'm alive. I, I, I have a chance to go to work today. I have a chance to do this and do that. Everything we have comes from God. Here's the second, Deuteronomy chapter 8. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you what? The ability to produce wealth. God gives you the brain. God gives you the mind to think, the ideas, all of that. And He confirms His covenant which He swore to your ancestors as it is today. So here's the second truth. Our ability to make money comes from God. And again, someone might say, but I studied hard. I graduated. I have a degree. And I attended this seminar. And all of those things are right and true. But again, ultimately, God was fashioning you in the womb of your mother. Husband and wife got together and produced a child. It takes a man and a woman and one magic moment. According to a famous song, if you belong to my era, you know that song. Okay? And that magic moment, God becomes involved. That's why to those of you who have more than one child, you know this truth. Or you have siblings, you know this truth. You come from the same set of parents and yet you are not alike. Would you agree? Right? You come from the same parents and yet parang yung kuya ko or ate ko, of course, to the mean brothers and sisters in the house, like my own mean brothers and sisters, pulot ka lang. Kaya kakaiba ka eh. Sabi nila, that's how my own siblings bullied me early on, you know. We were eight in the family, I'm the youngest, and they bullied me and say, pulot ka lang. Buti na lang kakampi ko si tatay at si nanay. God bless the tatays and the nanays in the world who will not disown their own child. He said, alam ko anak ko yan, galing sa tiyang ko yan eh, you know. So, but the point is this, we all are very different, you know why? Even though you have the same DNA of the father and the mother, God got involved in the forming of you in your mother's womb. And so, your ability, the unique skills, and, and one of the things also when you have children, as young as like a toddler face, you can already see what they're good at. Would you agree? You can already see their interest. Oh my gosh, look at my child. Mahilig magbuting ting, you know? He will become an engineer one day. Hindi po ako mahilig magbuting ting. That's why I cannot fix anything. In fact, I will ruin it. Oh, any kind of technology, whatever, I'm not allowed to touch uh, except for this microphone. Okay, so, but uh, our, our son who, who would eventually would become an architect, he would build Legos and like, just like that, looking at a diagram, he can make it. Uh, he, we would buy him all of these uh, toy robots, Zoids, all of that with those tiny, tiny parts. My goodness, he can build that because that's just his mind. Our daughter who's a nurse, uh, as young as like a toddler, she was already interested in like, you know, things about health and, you know, pati yung mga ginagawang mga drawing, drawing and all about doctors and nurses. We are, according to First Timothy chapter 6, the next, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Read this with me. We are to make money but not love money. What, what will be the bad thing, Pastor Albert, if we begin to love money? Oh, that, this verse is telling us. You will derail your own life. Because once you make decisions based on money as the highest priority in your life, how much you can get for yourself, even if others are ruined. Nako, so many people's lives and families have been ruined by that. Next, Matthew 6. Pastor Dennis mentioned this last week. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve 
both God and money. And so here's the lesson. We are to use money, not worship money. Only God deserves our worship. Amen? So don't look at whoever is in the money, in the bill, and say, I worship you, <laughs> almighty money. No. You worship God, and you use your money for the purposes of God. And in Proverbs chapter 3, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruit of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. So, read this with me. We must put God first and give Him the best. Many people put God last and give Him the leftover. And that's not good. When you read the story of Abel and Cain in the book of Genesis, we are told in that story that God accepted, take note, Abel and his offering and rejected Cain and his offering. It does not say God accepted Abel's offering and rejected Cain's offering. It says God accepted Abel, the person, and his offering. And God rejected Cain, the person, and his offering. Ultimately, your heart is what God is after, not is what is in your hand. But your heart is displayed by what you bring. Abel brought the best of his sheep that he was, uh, he was a, uh, a shepherd. Meanwhile, si Cain, anong ginawa niya? Sa kanyang bahay, kubo, kahit munti, ang halaman doon, sari-sari. He just started pulling out whatever, kangkong, kamatis, some of it is rotten. That's what he gives to the Lord. And God rejects that because it displays in his heart. He is not honoring God. So tell, say, say this with me again. We must put God first and give him the best. 300 years ago, there was a preacher from England. His name is John Wesley. He was the founder of the Methodist movement. He said this phrase, earn all you can, save all you can, give all you can. So we'll go through that one by one because we've tried our best. Barbara and I over the years have tried to, to live by those principles. Here's the first, earn all you can. Utilize all your God-given abilities, skills, education, experiences, relationships to maximize your earning potential early on and sustain it for the rest of your life. To each of us, God has given all kinds of abilities and then skills that you acquire over the years. And then your parents put you through good schools. So young people that are here, don't waste all of that time and the investment of your parents. Finish school, graduate, get a job, apply yourself, be diligent, excellent, and wise. And if later on you are promoted to a higher place, remain to be diligent for the rest of your days. If you start your own business, be wise in the way you handle that business. Pay right wages to your employees. All of those things. If you do that, you position yourself for an increase. If you don't, you position yourself for a decrease. How can you be promoted if you're lazy? How can you be promoted in the office if you're the one creating all kinds of rumor? Ikaw yung numero unong marites doon, you know? You're the one who's creating conflict, you know? The office was so peaceful and then you arrived and all of a sudden there's chaos, you know? Or in business, how can your business do well if you are not uh, churning out the best kind of product? You are one among a thousand others. Why should they choose your product? Why should they choose your business? has to be because it's excellent. The last line there, I want to spend a little bit time. Pastor Louis mentioned this last Thursday night. Don't fall for scams. So many scams. Every day there's a scam. And every day somebody gets scammed. Just click this link. And you did. And all of a sudden your details are taken and then your account is hacked and someone is asking money on your behalf. And then people actually believe it. We have friends by the way than that. Nahak yung account, started sending messages to everyone on the list, and people actually started giving money to this false person, false account, etc. And it was too late until later on, 40,000 something, 50,000 was already given to I don't know who, you know. So sometimes by email and, and so many other things. Re listen, my friends. Sabi nga ni Pastor Dennis uh, before, and Pastor Louis mentioned that on Thursday. If it's too good to be true, it's probably not. You know? Oh, your 10,000? If you put it here, it'll be 15,000 in one month. No bank can give that to you. 
true. No bank will give that to you because no bank is foolish enough to give that kind of return. One month, your 10,000 is 15. Sige, try ko lang. Wow, bumalik nga, 15. Hallelujah. Sige, todo, 15. Wow, yung 15, naging 25. Todo ulit yung 25, naging 40. Wow, ano kaya kung dagdagan ko ng 60 para 100? Eh di magiging 150, no? 100! Hello, uh, where are you? Hello? <laughs> Nasa ka na? Nasa, uh, how's my investment going? Hello, hello, goodbye. So many people have been scammed like that, right? OFWs who work so hard for so many years and then they come home, money is gone. So please be careful. Don't click anything that you receive if, if it comes from unknown sources. Don't answer that phone call. I, one time, I was, you know, this was a few years ago until I learned my lesson. It's like, uh, this is from, and this is my bank. You know, I have an account. Ah, uh -huh, is this your? Yeah, yes. And then I was saying, bakit may mga manok? <laughs> Somebody from the bank is calling me and there's roosters crowing. <laughs> Surely that's not an office. That's not a bank. That's like the barangay somewhere, you know. But may manok, you know. Then I realized, hmm, this is questionable already. Because they started asking me some of those very important details, you know. Your middle name, your mother's maiden name, your birthday, and all of that stuff. You know, so... So finally, banks have, would have that signage. When I visit my bank, they have a signage there. Please do not, etc., etc. Earn all you can. Save all you can. Have a budget. Live within your means. Oh, my gosh. Some people, parang akala mo, they are the richest people in the world. And they spend, spend, spend. Don't spend everything you earn. I was an accountant for almost three years in an advertising agency here in Makati. And as an accountant, I was the one in charge of payroll, go to the bank, etc. And so 15 and 30, right? 15 and 30. In the middle, 22. Albert, I don't know man, cash advance, right? So we would have a few employees, notorious talagang ganun. So 22. The problem with that is pagdating ng 30, ano? You now have already reduced yung pay mo on the 30th. So guess what happens? Pagdating ng 8th, meaning before the 15th, the, the same pattern. You know, now, obviously, all of us can face a major crisis at some points in our life, and we may need to do that. But when it becomes a pattern, it's like for one year, for two years, it's the same thing. There's something wrong with the way that person manages his salary. So live within your, your means. And worse, do not spend in advance what is only a potential income. Uy, malakas ang chismis sa opisina you'll get promoted next year. And you will have a 25% salary increase. Wow, hallelujah. Kailan yun? February. So ngayon palang gagastosin ko na. You know? It's not yet in your hands. It's potential. And then what happens? You were not promoted. The, the increase did not come. So now you're stuck with debt, which gets me to the third. Avoid getting into debt. Just avoid it. As much as you can. Now, obviously, we live in a credit society and that's a common thing, right? We have a credit card. We use it. But we pay it. We don't pay the minimum. Some people just keep paying the minimum and end up paying 20 years for a cell phone that will already be obsolete in a couple of years. Hindi pa rin bayad hanggang ngayon. So, you avoid getting into that. If you are, strive to get out of it as quickly as you can because the Bible says the debtor is a servant to the lender. You, have, you, you are in debt forever kayang you feel like. And so, over the years, when we would counsel people and say, hey, you're in debt? Okay, let's work on that. How much do you make per month? Let's set aside to pay that so that in one year, two years, whenever, you'll be free. Because when you're free, now you get to really enjoy the fruits of your labor. Amen? Now, look at this drawing. I saw this. You have to give first, save next, spend last. But what do we do? We spend first, we save some, we give whatever is left over. Okay? We spend first. As soon as we get our salary or our profit from the business, you know, it's like too fast, too furious. Okay? Uh, and then we save whatever, you know, and then give, well, let's see if there's anything left over. Barya, barya. I remember I had a, a friend in the past, sabi niya, God demands the tithe, not a tip. 
Wow. That's like, oh. You know. The Bible says, give your tithe, not a tip. Don't give God a tip. A tip is like, you know, the, the smallest percentage you can think of just out of, you know, gratitude. In, in common uh, dealings, yes, but not to God. God demands and deserves that we tithe. So here we go. Give all you can. The red one there is the tithe. The first tenth belongs to the Lord. Not the last. The first tenth. As soon as you get your salary, as soon as you get your profit, immediately set that aside. And then the next tenth is your savings. Set that aside for future contingencies. And then learn to live with the 80. Pastor Albert, I could barely make it to 100. You're telling me to live with the 80? Here's God's math though. <laughs> God's math is not our math. Our math is you have 100. If you give away 10, you have 90. God's math is if you have 100 and you give him the 10, your 90 actually stretches farther than your 100 if you did not give to the Lord. We've been practicing it for over 30 years. We know it works. God honors those who honor Him. And as God prospers you, let's say, wow, thank you, Lord. I got promoted. I have an increase. So what do you do? Increase your standard of giving, not just your standard of living. <laughs> so many people do this, you know. Uh, increase income, increase expense, you know. As soon as they, wow, na promote, and then spend everything. Lazada. <laughs> Shopee. <laughs> I remember early on in the pandemic, inis na inis lang ako sa commercial na yun with this actress. Mag-shopee ka na! You know? So, pumihira, nakaka-stress, you know? Para bang uh, you are not part of the global community if you're not engaging in it. But let's be honest. How many of you? It was just an impulse buy and you regretted it right after. Ay, what, why did I do that? Why did I spend on that? You know? So, here's what you do. Look at these next few numbers. These are not lotto numbers, okay? These are not, no, not just that it. So let me explain. The red is your giving. The middle number is your saving. The last number is what you spend, what you live on. Start with 10, 10, 80. The tithe belongs to the Lord. Save 10%, then live on the 80. If the Lord increases you, increase your level of giving. So now you tithe. And then you make a building pledge. And then you support missions. And then you support a charitable institution somewhere. You increase your giving, not your standard of living. And as the Lord increases you again, then increase your savings. Or let's save more so that next year we can travel. So true story po to, this is like 2018. We have life insurance. Okay? I do not part promote any particular one because I have friends uh, with everyone, okay? So, but the point is this. In life insurance, works like this, diba? If I have a policy, if I die, and I pray the Lord will give me 20, 30, 40 more years like Moses, you know? If I die, my family gets it, correct? I don't enjoy even a single peso of that policy. Correct? Yeah, my family will be the one to receive it, not me, because I'm dead, Okay? But because of how our friends in the industry were explaining it to us, it earns money. So there is a fund value of some kind. So sabi ko, Han, I want us to travel. So when it accumulated a certain amount back in 2018, we traveled as a family to Japan, which thank God we did because not use it, but enjoy it also. God not only gives you provision for your need, He gives you to enjoy I mean, how many of you here know that truth? God gives you wealth to enjoy. So, ganon, uh, increase and then you get 20, 20, 60 na, and you just keep going as the Lord prospers you. So, the example of Pastor Dennis last week, this person, di ba? Baliktad na, no? Gives away 90, keeps the 10. Malayo po po kami dun. <laughs> Hindi namin kaya to give the 90, you know? But if the Lord prospers you in that way, praise God. Second Corinthians chapter 9. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, 
For God loves a cheerful giver, not a tearful giver. <laughs> no, no, no. Cheerful. You're happy to give. You're not, you're not uh, burdened by it. And God is able to bless you abundantly. Can you read that phrase with me again? God is able to bless you abundantly. Replace the you with the me. Go. God is able to bless me. But how many of you believe that to be true? God can bless you abundantly. Now turn to someone and speak that as a prophetic word to them. God is able to bless you abundantly. Wow. Can you imagine if in beginning church, we all become abundant? Amen. Praise God. So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need. Wow, I love that. In all things, at all times, all that you need. You will abound in every good work. Verse 10. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge. Wow, well, I love those words. Huh? Increase, enlarge, abundant. Enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. Why is God enriching you? For what reason? So that you can be generous. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. The size of your harvest depends on the size of your seed. Plant a small seed, you get a small harvest. Plant a medium seed, you get a medium harvest. Plant a large seed, you get a large harvest. And by the way, those who have realized the, the practice of giving, not just the tithe that belongs to the Lord, but above and beyond, to support the different ministries of the church, for example. I have yet to meet a person who is like that, that complains about it. They're happy doing it. Because they know it comes from God, number one. And they know they're making a deposit that they can later on withdraw. Kapatid, kung wala kang deposit, <laughs> kung wala kang we withdraw. I, I, there are certain banks I don't have a bank account in. I can, I can go there and say, hey, I'm a pastor, you know. Give me some money. And they'll say, do you have an account here? No. Does that matter? Of course it does. You know, If you don't deposit, you cannot withdraw. So over the years, Barbara and I, so let me share a little bit of our story. We are a single income household. Our entire married life, with the exception of the three years we lived in the U.S., I am the sole breadwinner. When we lived in the U.S. and I was studying in Fuller, she became the breadwinner. Her, our visa allowed her to work, and so we were never na double, the two of us. Okay? So that's just a choice that we made, and I've been in full-time ministry since 1991. And I'll be honest with you, pastoral salaries do not compare with secular salaries. I'm, I'm a CPA, and over the years, people have asked me, you should, you should try that. Work that, you know, you will earn more. That's probably true, except that I will not be happy because I know that's not what God called me to do. And yet in all of these years, we have never lacked anything. We have sent our children to good private schools. We were able to send our children far, to a faraway land, okay? And, and now we have one more son still studying in a good school. The Lord has prospered our lives, Early on, as a single person, somebody asked me, so what, what do you want, Albert? What do you want in life? I remember saying this. David said, one thing I ask of the Lord. I said, I'm a little bit more bold. So I said, three things I ask of the Lord. A wife, a house, and a car. I said, and I was living with an American family at the time. I was single. And he said, well, Albert, you can live in our house. You can ride my car, but my wife is mine. So I said, of course, of course. That's why you have to pray that God will give me a wife. And God did. Barbara and I, uh, the Lord has allowed us to build a house. The Lord has allowed us over the years to travel. And all of it is, I can honestly say, it is because we have tried to faithfully apply what this book says about money. Earn all you can. Save all you can. We have avoided debt especially when we were living in the U.S. Here in the Philippines, it's very hard to get a credit card, right? I just, you have to prove a lot of things. In the U.S., they give it away for like nothing, you know? Uh, malls will, you, you visit a mall one time, they'll give you a credit card for that mall. So, and then there's 10%, 20%, so we'll just use that for the discount, and then we will never you ever use it again, you know? So, and we would always pay off everything uh, that we would spend on our card. 
We saved, we invested from our savings and investment. We were able to travel. God not only supplied our needs, He gave us the desires of our hearts. But the key to earning all you can, saving all you can is the third. Give all you can. If you faithfully tithe unto the Lord, you don't get poorer by giving to God. You get richer. And, and I'm not kidding. That is true. It has been proven time and time again. You don't get poorer. You get richer. Not just financially, by the way. Emotionally, your life is full of joy and peace. There's a lot of fringe benefits to tithing. And one of those is that as a family, you will just get to just enjoy the goodness of God even more. You will get richer by tithing and giving above, building missions, charity, whatever it may be. One last thing I want to say, then I can ask our worship team to come up already. Giving is not God's way of raising money. It is His way of raising children. Every time we give to God's work and to others, we become more and more like Jesus, the ultimate giver. Praise God. And I've, I have seen this to be true in our lives, and I want that to be true in all of us as well. Amen? Abundance, enriched, generous, that's what Beginnings Church is. Let's all stand as our worship team comes. Hallelujah. Would you already prepare your tithe and offering right now? Hallelujah. Praise God. Today, Lord, as we march forward to drop our offerings, and those of you online, we will show the online ways to give. But Lord, this is not easy for, for many people. This is the, Lord, the fruit of blood, sweat, and tears. Pinaghirapan to Panginoon. Every peso that comes into this envelope, pinaghirapan ito. There was jobs that were done. There were, there were businesses that were run. There were uh, deals and contracts that were done. Lord, so much effort was done to earn. And from that, Lord, we set aside first what belongs to you, the tithe, and second, above and beyond, as our heart is moved by the Holy Spirit. So Lord, would you honor everyone today who will give to the best of their ability, cheerfully unto the Lord. Honor their giving today, O God, in Jesus' name. As we worship the Lord, come and come forward. And then I will be praying for different items as we, as we end later on. But go ahead and come forward and bring your tithes and offerings to Those of you online, you can see the online ways to give. God bless you. Lift up your hands to the Lord in worship now. Thank you, God.
chorus again. Offer you my life. I offer my life. We offer to you our lives, Lord. Our jobs, our careers, our businesses, we offer to you. For your glory, Lord, I offer my days to you, lifting my praise to you. Yes, oh God. As a pleasing sacrifice. Yes, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I offer you my love. Right now, I want to offer prayers for different segments of our community. First, I want to pray for the students in the house. If you're still in school, raise your hand. Elementary, high school, college, uh, postgraduate. We want to pray for you. That first, you will finish what you are studying. And second, that you will excel in that so that you're set up for future success. If you are near anyone whose hands are raised, maybe you're the parent, or if, even if you are not, place your hand on, on the shoulder of one of our young people here that is still in school, okay? God Almighty, we pray for every student in the house. Lord, first, we honor their parents. It's not easy to work hard, to set aside money to make sure that our kids can go to good schools, that God, they can, uh, they can live in a good place near the school if they are already like in a dorm or a condo somewhere. And that, God, you will protect our children from any harm or any accidents. Lord, we speak your favor upon our students in the house, that they will excel. Lord, if they're struggling in any way in school, academically from any particular subject, or even emotionally, maybe there's like bullying happening or all kinds of stress, Lord God, mental uh, health issues. Lord, we pray that you will just touch our students today and just... Just lift up their spirit. Lord, if they're feeling pressured and stressed from the, the two years of pandemic studying, Lord, and now starting to go back face to face, Lord, would you just sustain them until they graduate? And if, and if they are in a course that needs a board, uh, you know, a professional exam, Lord, we pray that they will also pass that in the name of Jesus. Today is the bar exams. We pray, God, for your favor on those who are taking of our exams today in the name of Jesus. Bless our students in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you are an employee or you're self-employed, raise your hand. We want to pray for you that God will also prosper and bless you in your job or if, if you are a, like a employed in the house, stay at home, work from home kind of work, we want to pray also for you. God Almighty, we pray that prosperity and abundance will come to those among us that are employed, that have to clock in and clock out, travel from house to their place of work, battle through traffic, Lord God, and they have to relate to co-employees or a boss maybe that is not always the most pleasant to work for. But Lord, you remind us to treat our job as unto the Lord, to work with enthusiasm because we are not serving men, we are serving God. So Lord, we pray for every employee and self-employed person in the house. Would you just bless them in their work in Jesus' name. If you're a business owner, raise your hand. If you're business owners, hallelujah. We want to pray for you that God will prosper your business. Hallelujah. Lord God, we just speak the prosperity and abundance of God on our business owners uh, in the house. Lord, we need them because they employ people. They provide employment for others. Not only that, they also provide for their own family. And not only that, Lord, if they're believers and they're givers, Lord, through their giving, many others are enriched. And the work of God also prospers because of their giving. So, Lord, we pray that your divine favor will be upon them. Give them great ideas, Lord God, to even increase their business. Give them favor with suppliers and clients and everyone that they work with, including the government because, of course, we need those business permits and all of the paperwork that goes into it, the BIR and everything. God, we pray for those that are engaged in business. Would you just bless them, Lord, also in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There's one more. I don't want to forget. If you're retired already, 
You know, those of you that are, you've worked hard and you said, now I want to enjoy the fruits of my labor and just relax and attend the unstoppables. Okay. So, we want to pray for you as well. You know, uh, now, it doesn't mean that you're, you're retired. It doesn't mean you're not doing anything anymore. You can still be engaged in some form of business, but maybe you retired from your previous work or that you want to engage in ministry. Oh, we can make use of a lot of our seniors in ministry. Huh? Praise God. So if you are, uh, raise your hand. We want to pray for you to our, the more seniors among us. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray for the health of all of our seniors in the house. Their physical health, number one. Because this, of course, is the age when we start feeling all sorts of things in our physical body. Keep them healthy physically. Keep them healthy mentally, Lord. Don't allow them to be anxious about issues of life and death and sickness and their children and grandchildren. You know, all of those worries that they carry with them. Lord God, give them good mental health. Give them good emotional health, Lord. I pray that you will release them from those emotional burdens. Maybe they've carried some over the years. Baka may mga tampo, galit, inis. Some of those things, no? Minsan tampo sa anak, minsan tampo sa apo. All of those different things. And it, it weighs heavily on us. So today, we just want to release that also unto the Lord. So that we can be physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually healthy for the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now all of us, just lift up your hands to God. In your own way, can you just thank the Lord for blessing your life? Go ahead and just thank the Lord. Lord, thank you. Thank you for my job. Thank you for my career. Thank you for my business. Thank you, Lord, for the company I work for. Thank you, Lord, for my office mates, my boss. Thank you, God, for my business partners. Thank you for my clients. Thank you for my suppliers. Lord, just, I just want to thank you, Lord. Every good and perfect gift comes from you. Lord, teach us to be faithful. Faithful in giving to the work of God. Faithful in saving because to, we are not assured of tomorrow. We have to be prepared for tomorrow. So help us to save, Lord, for that rainy day. And then to live within our means, to get out of debt, and to not live, uh, you know, a wasteful life. But to be conscious that everything comes from God and we are to use it for His purpose and for His glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. God bless you. See you next Sunday. Thank you, Lord. Invite your family and friends next week. Amen. Thank you for joining our worship service today. We hope that the praise and worship of God inspired you. We hope that the prayers uplifted you. And we hope that the preaching of God's word encouraged you and challenged you to live a life according to God's purpose for all of us. I hope that every week you will join us in worship online and that you can share this to your family and friends classmates or office mates or neighbors so that together we may come before the Lord praising Him for all that He has done, giving thanks and praise to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord. God bless you. See you again next Sunday.